The body to me is an amazing feature. I mean, it's just how people are able to sculpt it. Like chiseling a piece of wood, you can chisel it into anything you want, really, if you know what you're doing. But Prince Edward Island to me is the one. When I started bodybuilding, a lot of people would come up to me and say, why are you doing this, Johnny? Like, what, what are you doing? Like, why aren't, why aren't you going to university? Why aren't you taking this course? Why aren't you going at West? Why aren't you doing this? Welcome to walk its red soil, but farmers are happy to work and to toil. There's thousands of islands in this land of ours. It just, it was a no-brainer. Like, that's what I want to do, and that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. A touch of God's great hand, this island must be. Prince Edward Island is heaven to me. Well, stop pulling. Stop. Heel. 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 I'm mutant sponsored bodybuilder Johnny Dow, and this is where I call home Prince Edward Island, Canada. Living here in Prince Edward Island is different than living most places. When I was growing up, this is my f the first place I lived, is the yellow apartment buildings. Our population is around 100,000, give or take a little bit. I used to get up on that crane there and swing off that crane and all the fishermen, including my dad, would get pissed off. It's not a very big island. I mean, it would take four to five hours to drive from one tip to the next. It's kind of horseshoe shaped. It's very country-like, um, not, no big cities, really. As I was growing up, I started, I was always an athlete. I always liked to be the best at whatever I did and excel at sports. This was the start of his uh, career at age what? Nine, probably. When Jonathan goes to do something for himself, he goes out for number one. No matter it was hockey or soccer, or he always, always did his very best. Grade nine, whenever I entered high school, is actually the first of me starting to work out. Clayton was a counselor at his school and he took Johnny under his wing. A very good friend of mine to this day, um, he was an educational assistant at the high school. I think in the second week of school, the principal called me in and said, there's someone here we think you might be interested in working with. So when I opened the file up, I, I remember seeing Johnny's name. Clayton worked out, so he got Johnny into, into the gym and taken him to powerlifting competitions and his weight at first wasn't very much, but his, his weight came up pretty quick, how much he was able to deadlift and squat and do a bench. And uh, I went on to set a national record, national squat record, and I went to set um, every powerlifting record in the high schools on Prince Edward Island here. I didn't like the way powerlifters looked, I liked the way they lifted, but I wanted to look like a bodybuilder, but lift like a powerlifter. I quickly found out that it's one or the other, for me anyways. Come on. A lot of people would come up to me and say, why are you doing this, Johnny? Like, what, what are you doing? Like, why aren't, why aren't you going to university? Why aren't you taking this course? Why aren't you going at West? Why aren't you doing this? Up, two rounds, go, come on. Yeah. So I had, to, I had to find out what I wanted to do, and and bodybuilding, it just, it was a no-brainer. Like, that's what I want to do, and that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to be a professional bodybuilder and do that as my job. Good power. This show here, Canadian Nationals 2014, in two and a half weeks in Laval, Montreal, I hope to really unveil something that people are not going to see coming, you know? I have, I have big hopes and, and I really hope this is my big ticket, my big break, but at the, at the end of the day, I have pre prepared myself for the worst, and if, if it all doesn't work out this show, we're just going back to the drawing board. Don't stop, it never stops. I'm gonna be repping the fuck out of these. Like, I'll try to get like 20 reps. Okay. Either way though, I'll tell you when I want you to come in. Give me a little bump, a little bit more, a little bit more. 
Three, two, one, go! The body to me is an amazing feature. I mean, it's just how people are able to sculpt it. And, uh, you know, it's almost like, chi uh, like chiseling a piece of, you know, wood. You can chisel it into anything you want, really, if you know what you're doing. And if you're working with the right tools. One more, one more with you, okay? Here we go. Come on. Up! <clears throat> Chest is one of my favorite body parts. Um, nice. I'm able to get, connect very well with my chest and front delts. So that, that leads to me getting a very big swell. Whereas in my back, I, I have to work on my mind to muscle connection. So again, chest is one of my favorite body parts. Big pumps. Blow them up, blow them up. pause in the middle of my set or wherever I may need it. There, the reason why I do that is because the actual stretch within the set, it creates this burn like, like no other. Like the only way you can get that much of a, of a tear down is to actually stretch the muscle. It's the same thing after you're done with your set. If you can stretch out an area, like say you're doing biceps, if you can hold that bicep down like that, it's just giving you that much more of a tear down. I can get away with using very little weight and still get really, really good um, sets. When I come down, I try to come down, 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 and then I bring my, my elbows back from the air to there, and what that does is give me a better stretch at the bottom of the app. Every time, you need, every time you go to push the rep up, you need to be pushing it and actually targeting your chest instead of doing your triceps. Everything is mind and muscle connection. There's little tiny guys that are using way more weight than I use right now, and you know I'm still making progress. I'm not saying this because I can't lift Teddy, because me and you both know when I want to lift, I can fucking lift. <sighs> Being vulnerable to injuries right now because my joints are, are weak, I'm this close to the show. This is as heavy as I'll go. It's two plates with this year. It's, it's literally a play weight. You just have to take your reps slow and uh, really know how to work with it. My structure is not as big as, as some of the guys I compete against. So in clothing, these guys may look a lot larger than me, but whenever I get on stage, start posing, everything seems to come together and I start to attract to me. Getting this post to the show, it's more running on motivation and, uh, and drive than it is actual energy. My energy is low, but when it's time for me to get going and get ready to go to the gym, you know, I perk up and spark up and, and always come ready to get the job done.
when I hit three weeks out, I wasn't too, too bad. Like I wasn't like starving. Made a couple very minor changes with my, with my new trainer, um, Salim. I, we added a little bit more fats and stuff like that. Every two hours, I'm just starving. Um, but like, it's like my metabolism jumped like five notches yet again. Someday I want to have that physique where when I step on stage, people don't go, don't look and, and go, wow, beautiful. Now I want them to be like, just disgusted. I want them to be disgusted with what they see. Sickening condition. Lions that have never been seen before. Someday, someday. Someday soon too. Work for it. That concludes our chest workout here. Um, me and John are gonna go get something to eat right away. I'm thinking chicken and veggies. How's that sound to you? You know what? I'd eat anything. Two and a half weeks out, I'm just starving. Like every two, and a, two hours, I'm just ready to drive some food. No more carbs tonight though, so more veggies, I guess. Let's go. When I'm out west working, I work inside of a big building, a chain of three buildings. We assemble big air seeders for farming. Stuff that you've probably never seen before. I mean, these are massive pieces of equipment. Tires bigger than me. $200,000 Canadian is what it costs to, to buy one of these units. It's a great job, I like it. I like the people that I'm surrounded with. I'm, it's just not in a good location. Just driving to work there now. My shift runs from 3.15 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. There's, there's no good gym out there, so I have to make do with a little tiny gym that the equipment's not very good in, and the hours sometimes don't allow me to train as long as I want to, or even at all. When I'm away working, and I get the chance to come home at the end of it, um, it's kind of like a relief, like, ah. Uh. We are at my house in Middleton, Prince Edward Island. We're gonna show you guys through my place. This is where I live. It's not a mansion, but we like it here. Now, whenever we bought this house a month and a half ago or five weeks ago, the appliances were already in here, and they give us this stove that has three small burners and one big burner. So I have these little burners cranked way the fuck up, trying to heat up the big pan to cook my meat in. It's kind of a nuisance. Another thing that I love about this house is that it has a dishwasher. I grew up without a dishwasher and whenever I was at West last year, I was housed in a house that had a dishwasher. And I didn't know how to use it or nothing like that, I haven't used one before. Learned how to use it because my roommate showed me how and ever since it's been like, I must have to have it. In the fridge, what have we got going on in here? Got all my mustards here, honey mustard. This is a good mustard too that I really like. I like to use during prep is sweet chili heat. And of course, I got my Walden Farms, you know, strawberry syrups, blueberry syrup, and caramel syrup. You never go too far without your hot sauce. This is the master bedroom. <clears throat> this is where all the magic happens. This side is my side of the bed, and only my side of the bed. My girlfriend, Brittany, she sleeps on this side. Over here, if you want to come over here, these are the dog's beds that the dogs are supposed to sleep in every night. All right, if you want to come in here, this is our master bath. You know, I try to get in this bath as much as possible, put some Epsom salts in there, relax. A nice touch to this too is 
you can turn the lights off and turn these fake candles on and it kind of feels really romantic and like that. That's our toilet right there. That's where all the rest of the magic happens. That's mine. That's all mine. Okay, I've showed you guys enough in this room. Let's get out of here. What do you think about these? See, whenever we get in here, we, had, we bought a new washer and dryer and we bought a new sectional. And Brittany, my girlfriend, decided that she had to have this certain color of fabric. Not fabric, just a certain color of fabric. So it was gonna take us eight weeks to get this certain color of fabric in. So you guys would've came here and there wouldn't have been absolutely anything to sit down on in here. So what I did is I went and I rented these, okay? Next time you guys come here, you'll see a nice little sectional. All right, now here is my favorite room of the house. I love it. And this is my posing room. Now, for a follow that looks in the mirror a lot, does a lot of poses and, and uh, studies the body and how the body looks and how it appears, this is a perfect little room. You know, it has real big mirrors front and back. Um, adjustable lighting, right? So I can point those lights anywhere I want. Uh, this one here, that is 19 PEI um, Strongman. This one here, 2013 um, overall bodybuilding champion, New Brunswick Provincials. This is uh, another year I won the um, Junior Strongman competition, 19 and under. This is the 2012 Canadian uh, Nationals Junior Men's title. Um, this was won in Edmonton, Alberta. And this, was, this is a highlight of my life. To win Nationals as a super heavyweight or you know, like a, as an open um, would be, I, I couldn't even imagine it. So that's what I'm seeking. And I really hope that someday soon really soon if possible <laughs> um, that can happen and I can um, I can kind of feel that feeling all over again probably times 10 this is after junior nationals my community got this made for me yeah congratulations from the town of Borden Carleton that was very nice they they put me in after I won that they put me in like the town parade and everything like you know and they had like a reception at the local arena you know, I always keep that around for, for memory's sake and, and, and to never forget that people do support me and, and appreciate what I do. You okay? You okay? You still ground or you fading? Lowest. Hey, hey, that's a clothespin. Not chewing on the clothespins. Here, go play. Come on, let's go play. Get him, get him. I do like having a spot, a nice little spot like this here at PEI, where it's quiet, you know, you're, you're not being bugged by a bunch of neighbors. Got these bones for them there four or five days ago. They're cooked in honey garlic. Ooh, a big chunk out of this one, bro. I'm not gonna be here all year round. Um, it's never gonna be like that. But I am gonna be here for probably at least half the year. The dogs get going all the time. I bring them out here first thing in the morning, me or Brittany does, and uh, they just go nuts out here. Again, it's not fast paced um, and busy, like city-like, what a, a lot of people are used to. Bring it back. Teamwork, good work. It's quiet, it's country, and we seem to like it here. The dogs do too. He's a good puppy dog. He's a good puppy dog. Give me buttery kids. Give me buttery kids.
when I was growing up, this is my f the first place I lived, is the yellow apartment buildings. That's where I lived till I was seven or eight years old, I guess. This is our little post office. That's where all the mail comes in and goes out of. I like it in the mail, so I, uh, I always make sure I'm there first. This is a local wharf. This is actually where my dad fish, fished out of the whole time I was growing up. Whenever they were fishing lobsters, they'd have lobster traps here stacked on one side of the wharf. And we used to get on the traps and be jumping off the traps. And, and uh, the fishermen did not like that either, to say the least. So this is where I get my hair cut, Barbershop Peter. He is the best barber uh, anyone will ever find. Anytime I have to go to a different barber, I'm just not in good humor. Okay, so this yellow and brown house is where my sister lives now. You know, look at that, look at the air, look at the mess. She gets that from her mother. <laughs> That's where my buddy Patrick lives. I've had a lot of ups and downs through my life, uh, more than the average person, that's, that's for sure. So we're here at uh, Patrick's Grave. Um, we're in Cape Traverse, Prince Edward Island. He got his picture there, the hockey sticks, it's really nice. Um, when Pat passed, he was 16. Uh, he passed in, on July 15, 2005. Well, when Johnny was in, back in high school, he had a really good friend uh, who committed suicide. Patrick and Johnny were the best of friends, right? Um, so everybody was sort of devastated by it. And, it's, you know, it's, when your best friend takes his own life, um, it's something that you, you never forget that. It was tough on everyone in the town, and it took a hard hit to Johnny. And um, alcohol kind of was his savior th that he thought. When I drank, I, I blacked out every single time. I had my first drink of alcohol when I was 13 years old. Well, his behavior probably uh, deteriorated because I don't think he would have went out and just, he wouldn't have taken his life in the way that Patrick did. You know, if somebody said, you're, are you are you suicidal or you're thinking about killing yourself, he probably would have answered no, but his behavior and his, and his lifestyle certainly um, was indicative of someone who, was, who really didn't care. So this is the area, area right now where we're at, where I ended up getting alcohol poisoning and almost losing my life. Um, and that gazebo right there is where the little Battle of the Bands or um, gig was playing. And we were all, there's a, I don't know, fair little crowd out here, and there was cars parked out here and everything. A lot of, lot of drinking going on. Um, and this is where I was unresponsive, and where they took me, ended up taking me to the hospital. Whenever I got that extra, extra pint or, or Mickey, whatever you want to call it, that's where it all went downhill. It was after he was having troubles, um, after Pat had died and yeah, Andrew the cop um, had called Mums and said that he was taken right to the hospital because he went unresponsive in the back of the car. So uh, me and Mom rushed right into the hospital and Johnny was on the table and he, um, his heart had stopped and the doctor was coming out to tell my family that I had passed away. He walked outside the room, seeing my family, they're having a really tough time crying, you know, just holding each other, um, fearing the worst. And that's whenever the doctor said he turned around instantly and just tried to shock me more and try to get more of a beat off my heart. And that's whenever he did get a little jump in my heart and a little beat. So he just tried to work off it it, I went flat line again, and he was able to, you know, give me some more jolts and to, and to bring me back um, for good. We're just all sitting in the waiting room waiting for the doctor to come and tell us, you know, that he's okay and that he's going to be okay. And it just minutes seemed like hours. You know, that was 
like one of the worst nights of my life. To see like the pain that he was going through and he was trying to to save himself with alcohol and it, that wasn't the case at all. It was hurting himself but everyone. It was definitely a scary time. More scary for my family, I think, because I didn't really know what was going on, but um, it's not something that my family likes to talk about too much. It's kind of, they kind of put that in the back burner. It brings back a, a bad time for them and a hard time for them. So I'm opening up to you guys right now because I want everyone to know that, you know, no matter where you come from, what you do or what issues you have, you can turn it around and you can be successful. So this is the entrance to the Johnny Dow Fitness Center. They named this little tiny fitness center above the local arena after me because they see the dedication and hard work I put into the sport. Now, this is not a huge facility or nothing like that. It's very, very, very minor. Um, but it does mean a lot to me that they took the initiative and actually put my name on um, on the, on the little gym here. So, you know, it says a lot for the community and, and says a lot for me and they just wanted to give back a bit. So let's go on in and take a look at it. There's the, uh, got my signature down there. Every day I was here at some point in time um, from just when I was a little fella. Um, a lot of those days I would be on the ice, blue hair. Adam AA, Island Champs, uh, Jonathan Devil. If I wasn't on the ice, I was watching hockey or, or watching someone play, and of course, eating those great, greasy french fries. Okay, so here's the little tiny facility that they named after me. It's not big, they don't make money off this little gym. It's simply here for people that are starting out and that uh, don't want to be intimidated going into a bigger gym. So I do know people that come here and train every single day. And they seem to like it, you know, it's nice and close, convenient, it's very cheap, like next to nothing. And it's 24 hours, you can come up here whenever you want. So when I was training for Junior National, I would come up here, you know, sometimes two, three, four in the morning when I couldn't sleep. And I'd be on the elliptical and I'd be on the treadmill, just, just going. So they had the little, the sign up here. Looks pretty good. They did a pretty good job of it. Pretty happy with it. What do you got, bud? Crab. Oh, it's a crab. Today we come over here because this is where we like to take the dogs down here to run. Um, it's not a very busy beach. And we can kind of just let them off their leash, take their collars off and let them go and run. You guys may have seen me doing barbell lunges on the beach. Um, this is actually the spot where I do it. Whenever I need to kind of just think and, and come down here and free my mind a bit, I just put my headphones in and I just walk. I walk that way as far as you can put near sea. Um, you know, just along the water edge and that, I find that's the best thing. Uh, it's really soothing and, and kind of just not a care in the world. Just thinking freely, you know, I love that shit. My mom's house is literally just across, like, it's just across the bank there. My mother has them spoiled rotten. I'd have to say my number one fans are my closest family, you know, my mother. I just do is cooking the laundry. <laughs> yeah. My sister. I'm the, I'm kind of the one where he leans on. Leans on. I'm the one that paints his body with with uh, tan and... My nephews. He loves to spend time with his nephews. Um, just last weekend he took Kemper for the night, just out of the blue. Uh, my girlfriend. You must have cleaned this shit up, did you? Like Johnny has his own house now with his girlfriend <laughs> and he still goes to mom and mom's and cooks meals, like... Yeah, like the other night he was at the gym and he lives five minutes from the gym now and then he comes home, so I said, oh, what's going on? He goes, oh, I have, I'm coming to have a shower. I said, 
oh, here? He goes, yeah. And then he gets at the frying pan, and what are you doing? Cook. Oh, you got a frying pan home? You got, yeah, yeah, we have some. Well, take four or five of these and just <laughs> be off. The support is great, and you know, it's something you gotta be thankful for because not many people can all, not everyone can say that they have the, the amount of support that I have, that's for sure. Jonathan will never leave home. No. Arm session, arm thrashing. All right, so we're here at Bedak Total Fitness. Uh, this is my home away from home. This is where I've trained since I was 15 years old, um, day in and day out. Blood, sweat, and tears. I haven't been training here as much this prep due to my injury, due to the fact that I need more machines than free weight stuff, but there's been a lot of fucking weight moves here, and there's going to be more weight moves in the future. We're going to smash some arms here tonight, you know, see, uh, show you guys how it's done, and uh, get the biggest swell we can. Ah! Uh. <clears> Ugh! <throat>